we're back on the study guide intervention page. Okay? So, we're on the study guide intervention page. Uh, that is not the one I want to do. This guy, and we're on page six as opposed to page five. Right? What does it say? Identify a function. So, all we do on this side of the page is evaluate functions. You know what it means to evaluate in math? Close your computer. Solve. Or do the work, do the math, yeah. right? Solve. That's a good way to say it. Yeah. Today is the fourth, right? Today is the fourth. Good. Get the paper out. Because you're going to be able to complete the rest of that homework page in class. Be simple. Um, and then the quiz for these first two sections is on Friday. And I told you there would be some sort of assessment on Friday. It's five questions. Five? Five. Super simple. Okay, so now we're just going to evaluate. We evaluate talent, right? Football, we had to cut down to 53 this past week, right? You guys watching Hard Knocks? Everybody, everybody says it's awful because it's not that gritty, lots of bad language, Hard Knocks that they're used to because the Bears are so nice and touchy feely. I love it because I get to see my team in, in, in What's Hard Knocks. Oh, it's an, H, uh, an HBO show, a Max show. Um, they go through uh, training camp with the team. Pre-training camp was New York Giants, and now this one's for the Bears. So it's what I want to see, not what you guys care about. Um, and they said it's too touchy, it's too nice. Everybody's wonderful. I like it. It's interesting, but... Evaluate. They were evaluating talent. They showed the cut down, you know. Yeah. You're not, we're, yeah. we're letting you go. You did great. Here's what you need to improve on. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. All right, so we now know what a function is. To some extent, we're allowed to make mistakes, right? And now we're just going to take a function that we're given, and we're going to be given input values. For a function. So evaluate this function 4x minus 8. Okay? And what I'm going to say f of, I don't know, let's say f of 3. You know what that means? Find f of 3. All it means is wherever there's an x, put in a 3. So just input the 3 for the x, do the math, and you're done, right? So f of 3 would look like 4 times 3 minus 8. We good? So f of 3 equals what? 12 minus 8, which is 4, right? So we could keep writing. Do the math. 12 minus 8. And then we would say, okay, f of 3 gives us an output value of 4. Right? Does everybody understand that this, a function of x, f of x, is equated to y. f of x is the same thing as y. So, if you, y. Yeah, so we're saying this is a this this what's going to be written over here 
is a function of x. And if we were going to list it as a coordinate pair, we get this as our x value, and our y value would be 4. Okay. So if I needed to graph it, this would be that on the graph. Does that make sense? Pretty simple. You've seen this before. You've solved these before, right? Y equals mx plus b, etc., etc. Given a certain value. What about if we're given let's look at the example. No, no. Yeah, it's a good example. Uh, our example is 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 3x. And it says find f of 2, negative 2. f of negative 2. All it means is everywhere you see an x, we put in a negative 2 and do the math. Okay? So, f of negative 2. And you see it in the example is 4 times negative 2 cubed plus 6 times negative 2 squared plus 3 Times negative two. Okay. Does everybody understand that two cubed is eight? Yeah. Two times two times two is eight. We're good. Negative eight. Well, it's going to be negative eight, right? Because it starts negative. Negative two times negative two times negative two gives me negative eight times four plus six times negative two squared, which is four. Cool. Minus. Plus three, or you could say minus. I, I'm writing it out this way okay. first, right? And then I'm going to start doing some math, okay. right? Uh, four times negative eight is negative thirty-two plus twenty-four, and as Mr. Callick says, minus six. Good morning, pardon this interruption. Is that Malabanov? Please report to the guidance office with your Chromebook. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Okay, so we put this all together. What do we get? Negative 32, positive 24. Ooh. Eight. Uh, right? Negative 14, right? Good. Isn't that what it says up there? Oh, gosh. Thank goodness. It's the example that's on your page. Simplify. Woo! I got one right. Look at the next one. Ew. Gross. Look at that function. Ew. Gross. No, it's, it's simple. It just looks ridiculous, right? If <laughs> this function of x, g of x, is, you know what kind of function this is called? When it has parameters? Uh, it's actually a piecewise function. Uh, it has different pieces to it. Like a puzzle. So is that greater than or equal to uh, less than? Less than or equal to four. <laughs> Three x if four is ten. And then, oh, 2x squared minus 15 if story x is 
Rangers. So are you going to give us questions like this one? Yeah. Yes, we're going to answer. Absolutely. Really? Now you got to get detention because it's on, on recording. You've been recorded? Oh, I'm so sorry for everything I've said. Okay. Did I ever say anything else? Not yet. <laughs> All right, so we're going to find. F of six and oh sorry, G of six. Uh G of six and G of ten. Now, if you read, if you read, we're looking for an input of six. These have parameters. So we use this top piece if. It's less than or equal to four. Is six less than or equal to four? Is six less than or equal to four? Oh, no. No. So we move on. Is six between four and ten? Yes. Yes. So when we do six, we're going to use this middle piece. So we're going to say G of six is three. Times six, and what's that? Eighteen. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Now let's look at ten. It's not less than four, less than or equal to four. It's not in between four and ten, but it is ten or greater, right? Good morning, pardon this interruption. Cadet Martelli, please report to the guidance office with your Chromebook. Thank you. Report. All right, sir. Duty's call. Okay, so we use the last one because it's 10 or greater. And here we go. What's 10 squared? What's 10 times 10? 100, sir. 100 times 2 is? 200, sir. 200 minus 15 185. is 185. So G of 10 is 185. I knew that. Cool? That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. So there are one, two, three, four on that page, right? On the bottom of that page that we can go through. Make sense? Yes, Does this sir. make sense? Okay. Is it exciting? Heck no. It's a bit easy, but exciting. now, are you allowed to use a calculator for this? Yes, Lord. All right. So be careful when squaring your your terms. The order of operations. Uh, in the calculator only knows what your input is, so you can pretty much check it. Do you want to go through the first one together? We'll do one and three together, and then I'll let you do two and four. Yay! Seems like you know how to ask the right questions. Number one. If a function of x is 5x squared minus 4x minus 6, find a function of 3. So it means everywhere you put an x. Everywhere there's an X, you input three, right? Great. So, Mr. Douglas, going to rewrite. Ah, I have a three. So, we, say it again. Thank you, Sala. Great. Great. 
That's the answer. I'm asking what I write next. What's next? So what am I going to write, Mr. Douglas? Five times. Times. Three. Don't forget the square. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. I'm, I'm just I'm just showing you as we go. And then the next is four times. No three again. Square. No square. No square. Right. And then we subtract six. Then we do the math, right? Now, order of operations says I do what first? Chris, what do I do first? I don't care. What do I do first? That was the question. Can, can we let Chris do it? What do I do first? Okay, so what does that mean? Uh, let's leave it as this for a second. Just for a second. So I've evaluated the answer. No, you, you did it right. Don't worry about it. No, 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 no. I did my math wrong. Because I put six instead of five. Okay. Forty-five minus twelve is what? Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Oh, awful. 33 minus 6 is 27. So f of 3, just like Yao said, is 27. Good? Good? You with me? I just did number one, dude. We were napping. Are you writing anything? No. Come on, man. Quiz on Friday. That's two days. What are you whining? Quiz on Friday. I've said it like three times now. Three games. Yeah, I was Five I questions. I Five questions. Oh, you made a face. Sorry. I apologize. Forgive me. I'm human. Sorry. Number two. Are you just doing them? You good? Um, no, no, you can keep going. You can keep going. Do you want one more example? Yeah. yeah. Wait, 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 go wait, through number wait, three? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's go through number three. Oh, so, uh, so what's T? Number two. Number two. Number two. It says find H T. What is that? Just plug in T. Just plug in T. Just put T in for how next. Can I, how can I add a letter to uh, what? All right. Number two. Oh, Brody. Number two. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> so, can we still do number three, though? We will. Okay. So if H of X, we'll do them all and then I'll give you a task. If H of X is 9X to the ninth, that's why they use a variable, by the way. Um, minus 4 x to the fourth plus 3x minus 2 find h of t physics time cool what does it say it says everywhere there's an x what are we going to put there that's it so h of x I'm sorry, H of T is going to look like this. What are you solving? Did they give you a T? Did they give you a value for T? Oh, you don't even have to put like the parentheses and stuff? Well, come on, man. <laughs> Done. That's it. No, I understand uh, Sean's question. Because, like, he's like, dude, I can't finish. There's no number answer for this. What have they done to me? They've broken my brain. Bro, shut up. So, 
So, Mr. Cargill, when you get to physics class, I'd say physics. In college, probably. Oh, you won't. I'm trying. I'm trying. After my two years of math in college, I'm trying not take math. Okay. Anyway, in physics class, when I teach physics, there are lots and lots of variables, and sometimes I just need you to rearrange a formula to solve for a certain value. So, if I had um, something that said x equals one half g t squared, right? And I said solve it for t. There's no numerical answer, right? You're just using your algebra skills to multiply by two, so it's two x uh, divided by g equals t squared. So you take the square root, and you end up looking like that. And can you solve it? No, because you don't know distance yet. That's what X is. It, gravity, you would know. The acceleration due to gravity, you would know. So give it to me. Right? So you do 9 point meters a second. But then you can find out how, how long it takes something to fall from a certain height. That's what that is. How many do that? Good? Okay. But that's that's why it's okay to end up with an answer that looks like this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Getting you ready. We get to say it's okay. What's at the calculus? Uh, more calculus. Yeah. More difficult calculus. Yeah. Differential. Yeah. So you think if I become an engineer, I have to do math the entire time? <laughs> All of it. All of it. Well, uh, well, what, I, what I have to do even more difficult math? Difficult yeah. Than what I do? Yeah. So I got a question. No, I'm like, it's not even math. But what if I want to be like, oh. Wait, wait, shut up. Let me ask my question. <laughs> well, don't tell me to shut up. Yeah, no, no, no. You got to shut up. So, <laughs> look. What do you think in like 10 years my job would be? I don't know. What are you interested no, in? No, 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 Like just by looking at it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you think? My person in, in 10 years, in 10 years, really and truly, listen, I can't believe this is being recorded. Uh, <laughs> in 10 years, I see you doing whatever it is you want to do because you have the ability to go get it, right? Good job. Um. I think because you're that kind of guy, I could see you in sales, I could see you in marketing, I could see you talking to people for a living, right? Understand, understanding. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, you need a little bit of math behind it, right? You need a solid understanding of if you're going to go into business, right? Or if you're going to go into sales. You have to understand trend, that's what calculus is for, right? You can see where this product is needed most, right? And when the product is needed most. And that's what mathematics is for. Okay? It's like cheating and seeing the future. When is this? If you know calculus, oh, I'm way off topic. If you know calculus, then you know at a certain point in time, how quickly this thing flies off the shelf. Or if, if there's a continuation, when sales begin to dip, you know, you take your derivative here and you can say, oh wow, not as many are sailing at this selling it at this point in time. It's like cheating and seeing the future. Now, we have to hope that the public follows that same function. You know, they take data over the years and create a public data. Is a simulation, so it's cool. Right, so it's never perfect, correct? We never do the exact same thing every single year. So things do change, but you can account for that little bit of change through statistics. Okay. Back to number three. 
guys are so funny. <laughs> you said you're going to be NYPD. I love the So, I have a good friend from a long time ago whose dream, his dream was to be NYPD. I told him his name was Harold. I said, Harold, I don't know why you'd want to put yourself in harm's way, but I I respect the decision. I can never do it. I'm a scaredy cat. I'm afraid to get shot. And he did it. Really? Yeah, but it, now it's now it's, now it's recorded. Come on. <laughs> All right, so we're going to find. <laughs> All right, which one am I using? Uh, that one on top. The one on top. Why? Because negative five is less than negative one. Yes, sir. Right? No, so sir. we just put in guessing. negative five plus 45. <laughs> What's negative five plus 45? Good guess, then. Thanks for your honesty. <laughs> no, you're right. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Good. That's funny. Sure. So G36, we're going to use the bottom one, right? Because it's greater than negative one. What's 81 minus 36? That would have to be 70. They're not 70, sorry, 45. Uh, Is that right? How the heck did we get 36? 36 is right here. You they give it to you. 45. It is 45, right? We, oh, sure. Yes. Like, we knew it. Well, well we I knew it. it. Yeah. Uh, That's why I make a quarter a day. What? I, I make a quarter a day here. Um, bro, you believe that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little more. Maybe a little joking. more. Joking. Sir. Uh, uh, bro, it's not fun. It's like, I don't I can be a. I'm not paying you to do that. A quarter, I'm just posting yeah, holes, aren't they? Yeah. Bad yeah. language yeah. and all, right? That's like a dollar twenty-five. A quarter a day is not a dollar twenty-five. We work every day. Five. Well, we work five five day week, but oh, you know we do get paid. Whatever. This is good. <laughs> I understand what I understand what Martelli's saying, and I understand what Hurst is saying. Do you get paid for the five days that you work, or if you're under contract, do you split up that quarter That's over seven mean. days? So either or, right? If I was you a great negotiator, I'd negotiate a quarter for all seven days, right? Yeah. And then I'd really be kicking it with dollar what dollar seventy five. What would you I'm have killing to do it. Killing it. Say it again. How, how could you negotiate that? So you negotiate a salary. Oh, okay. And then that salary is split up over a certain number of days. Oh, uh, same time. <laughs> you guys get paid the first and the fifteenth, like like normal split. No. Some some places do first and fifteen. Oh, okay. Others do bi week, every other week. Like, every it's probably more than three. You gotta go. Shit. Bye. Where's the homework? There is none. It's, it's the bottom of the page. The bottom of the page.
Uh, no, no, no. The bottom of the practice. Yeah, right. Right. No, one practice. One, one practice. One so one it's one. 10 through 14. Okay. I am so glad I set, I set that alarm. I never would have remembered. Okay, so you're through the first. Sure, am I, am I, am I the third best student in the class? Who's the first? Yeah. And me and Cargill, obviously. Uh, um, I don't know. You know I, I may have to hold up on the quiz because we're not done. Oh, yeah. Well, what? No, 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 please. No, please. Shut, 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 shut. Put it Friday. Make it Friday. No. Make it Friday. No. No. Make it Friday. Make it like two now. weeks from now. Just right. make your mind. I have to see. No, no, no. You're responsible for this material. Oh, yeah. We are. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Um, exactly. <laughs> Why are you back and I pick up on the lead? Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm gonna push. I'm gonna push the quiz to Monday. Push the quiz to Monday. You're still about to fail. <laughs> I'm a bad, I know You'll I'm still have. Going. I still need you to look through this. Okay. I'm gonna keep going. Um, okay. Uh, here's what he said. He said I don't give a fuck about relationship, but I'll do it to my cousin. That's a little crazy. Yo, you said that's the branch? Uh, no, you, you really need to hear what the branch be talking about. Every time he goes to a family function, he be talking about all his cousins. Yo! So the thing that he was doing to so. All right, since you've decided not to get up, um, we're going to get started. Close your computers. Let's get to work. My first question. Does anybody have any questions on what we've done so far? That's great. What is your question? Okay, what do you need to go over? Um, do you see the like the 14? Am I Are we over there on the T? Yeah. Sorry. So it says wherever there was an X, put a T in there instead. Now, can we do this math? No, because we don't have a value for T. That's why this exponent is so high. Because there's no way to do the math. So they just showed you this outrageous function. Yeah. Goofy. All right. So the second section or the second half of this section of the book is telling us we can evaluate functions if we're given some sort of value to put in. This type of function, we have to look at the parameters. So it's negative five less than or equal to negative one, yes. So we'll put it into this function. So we put in our negative five for x, and then add 45 to it. Okay? Yay. Yeah. Any other questions? Those are great questions. You have a clock of time. I forgot to hit stop. I snoozed it. All right. 
Are you looking at this? Did I give you this? You did. Yeah. I handed you this, right? All right, so on page 10, What does it look like? Um, a wish <laughs> Oh, the function? Yeah. Because it's a parabola? Yeah. Is that how you call it? Yeah. You want me to spell it? No, 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 no. no. Not the parabola, like the wish uh, I'm not sure. That's what you call it. Oh. The parabola. Close it. Okay. So do the homework. Like, I promise I'll give you time. This is the homework. That's not homework. He was on the first page, the first practice page. So now to get credit the next time you do the whole practice. And I'm almost positive if you don't have it, if you lost it, I've posted it. Okay, so I'll repost it and say do 10 through 14. Okay. What are we doing? Uh, what does it say we're doing? Exercises. Well, what does it say? What does it say? What's the title of this section? Analyzing graphs. graphs of functions and relations. Analyzing graphs of functions and relations. So we first learned set builder notation, right? We didn't talk about interval notation. We'll talk about that later. But if I have, I don't know, x is greater than four, right? So this is me going back. How would I write this in set builder notation? X, Y, X. Good. So we need a we need our bracket. X, X, X y. such that X. X. X is greater than four, and it's an element of what? Three. Three. Yeah! Three. Three. All reals, right? We're talking about everything greater than four. Cool? So we're going to take a function that we see, and we're going to talk about the domain of that function, all of the possible x's you can input to get an output value, and the range of that function, right? So we're going to talk about domain, And range. Cool? Great. Um, let's not use this example. I, let's use an easier example. Sound cool? Great. Anybody have a calculator in here? Can you turn around and grab one of the two that are sitting right by? Uh, you have it? You have it?
Now, what's the y-intercept of this function? What's the y-intercept of this function? Negative 2, right? That's where it crosses the y-axis. Could I also see it in this function? Yeah, because it's that constant. We understand the difference between, we know what a constant is, never changes, right? So it doesn't have a variable attached to it. That's my constant. Cool? Have you ever heard that before, Mr. Douglas? Constant. Constant. Yes. This term at the end has no variable. Good. Good. Excellent. Excellent. So we know that the y-intercept is our negative two. We can also see with our crazy little googly eyes y intercept is negative two. Right? So that's one of the easy things you can see. You can also see here, it's really, I'm going to apologize. This crosses at about one and a half. We can find our possible zeros, right? So we approximated it one and a half and negative one and a half. I'm not going to ask you for an exact value. Don't need it. Not for this purpose. And then we're going to talk about the domain and range of this function. What are the possible x values I can put in? What, what are all of the possible? Can I put in a billion and get something out? I'll get an answer, right? Can I put in negative 6 trillion and get an answer? All right. So my domain for my parabola is infinite. Right? So there are two ways to write it. There's set builder notation. So I would say my domain is the set of all x values such that x is an element of all the real numbers. That means everything I can put in. There are no parameters on this. Cool? I can also write it in what Mr. Kallix asked about last time we met. Was that Friday? Last Friday. Remember you asked about interval notation? Yeah. I'm going to show you the interval notation for this domain. Interval notation is an easier way to show a set of numbers. We still use the bracket or the brace, pardon me, and we say negative infinity, we go from left to right, to positive infinity, good <laughs> job, and close our bracket. Cool? So which is easier to write? Obviously this guy. Doesn't that make sense? I had the question from my CP4 class. 
why don't we use parentheses? And if you've ever really looked at sets of numbers, they always use these brackets. So this alleviates any confusion when you see a bracket or a brace, I'll show you that in a minute. We're talking about a set of numbers as opposed to a coordinate pair. Right? When we when we wrote when we have coordinate pairs, what do we use? Parentheses. That shows me that my x value is zero and my y value is negative two. In parentheses, it's a coordinate pair. Here, this is a set from negative infinity to positive infinity. Cool? Let's talk about the range of this function. Is there a bottom to this function? Does it have a bottom value? Does it have, have a bottom to it? Yeah. How low does it go? Negative two. Negative two. Yeah. But it goes up. And it goes up. Forever, that's what those arrows mean, right? Yeah. On the back end, last we used to negative infinity. You're on top of it. So let's talk about the range. The range, I guess I'll do it over here. What, are we doing hand flow notation? Let's do set builder notation first. So we need. An inequality that shows from negative two up forever, right? So everything greater than and equal to negative two. Is that is that okay by you? Yeah, because it includes the negative two. So a range is ah not equal. It's greater than equal to negative two. So I'm going to put that in my set builder notation. So my range are bracket all my y's in this function. So now I'm going to put in my greater than or equal to y is greater than or equal to negative two, and it's an element of what? All those reals. And now you're going to say, hey, Sokol, I'm tired of set builder notation. Can I use the interval notation? Does it include negative two? Yeah. Sorry, that seems too different. Brace means it includes the value. Remember when we were graphing these on a number line? Remember the old days where you put the number line out? And you wanted to talk about everything greater than and equal to? We closed the circle. Because it included that value. You remember that? A long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. So when we listed on a number line all those values, if there was an equal sign there, we had a closed circle. If I was talking about y is less than 6, I'd have an open circle at 6, and then shade that way, right? So open circle gets the bracket, 
closed circle gets the brace. Right? So, in your notes, it would be great if you wrote this. Okay, write that down. Why do I include, while you're writing, why do I include negative infinity and positive infinity with our bracket idea? Do they have actual values? Does infinity have an actual numerical value? It does not. Therefore, we include it in something we say, oh, well, if it's negative infinity or positive infinity, we can't put a brace around it. We have to bracket it. It's the line. That's the line. Really? Because there's a prayer room upstairs. Oh. Cool. <clears throat> Yay. Now, the functions that you are given have your vertex given to you. The vertex, the vertexes are given in the two functions at the bottom of the page. So we're going to know what the range is because we know what that y value is. Remember I said the y value is our minimum or our maximum. Here it's a minimum because it's pointing up. If it's pointing down, it's a maximum. It's the top of the parabola. So that's good. So, what do we look for? We look for y-intercept. What are the most important things? Y-intercept, domain, and range. What else can we find? We can find out. We can approximate where it crosses the x-axis. All right. This is where I'm going to stop the lesson, but I want you to use your calculator. Okay? So everybody turn on their calculators. You know how to turn this on? Turn on your calculators. In the upper left hand corner, it says y equals. Hit it. Hit y equals. You're going to put in a function. It's probably already there. You probably already have x squared minus 2. Can you hit clear just so we can do it again? Turn on your calculator. Clear that function so you can put it in yourself. Do you know how to put in x squared minus 2 Absolutely. on that line? Yes, sir. Right? The x, tau, theta, n button here gives you an x. The x squared button squares it. Then you can hit minus 
and then you hit two. Good? That button right there will give you an X. If you hit X squared, that will square it. You hit subtraction, you hit two, and it should say X squared minus two. You good? Did you get there? Okay. Did you clear? That button right there will give you an X. X tau. Yeah. If you hit X squared, we'll square it minus. All right. And then two. All right. Now, all the way in the upper right, it says graph. Good morning, pardon this interruption. Will Plebe Guerrero please report to the guidance office? Plebe Guerrero to the guidance office. Thank you. Did you hit the graph? Does it look like this? Yes. It looks like that, doesn't it? To a certain extent. I didn't draw it. And it does look like it crosses at about one and a half, doesn't it? It does. One and a half and negative one and a half. You did it. Oh, That's it, guys. We're going to use these things a lot. And if there's graphing that has to happen at barracks, use Desmos. Desmos is so much easier than this because you're so used to that keyboard. It makes life a lot easier. Have you used Desmos? So, what, what, what's so the if we yeah. if we have to actually were to get this for homework, I just have to put it. Like Good morning. Parting this interruption. Will Cadets Maroney and Cho please report to the guidance office as well? Maroney and Cho to the guidance office. Thank you. Domain range y intercept where it crosses the x axis. What else does it say? Uh, what does it say? Oh. Y intercept is zero, so that's where it crosses the x axis. I don't need you to, and the domain and the range, those four things. I don't need you to find it algebraically yet. We can go ahead and factor later. I'm not into that yet. That's our next step. Okay? And then we're going to start looking at odd and even functions. This is going to bend and go in different directions. But now we're good. Thank you.